Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's why it's so much better. Wait a minute, Z Xerox is, is what what type of copier is that exactly other than random? The toner Xeroxography. Uh, oh, really? I think they actually, a thermal Xeroxography. Um, <laughs> Can you hear us? Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think I can hear you. Oh, okay, good. Um so are we ready to start? Okay. All right. Um Calling the meeting to order here. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, can you do a roll call to see who we have here? Chairperson Pat Rollins. I'm here. Vice Chair Ruthann Gilbert, absent. Uh, member Toy Abney. Here. Member Justin Kent, absent. Member Elizabeth Moore. Here. Present. Member Bank Absent and all members Here, Okay, sounds like we have a quorum and then we have a uh, a member that is coming in over video. Um, okay, and so we have I think one person signed up for open comments, which is Joe Catarba, who's going to talk to us about the Friends of Wood Creek. Is that the correct name? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The floor um, is yours. <clears throat> great. Um, is he is he in a good position? He's in a great position. Yeah. Okay. Good. Am I okay here? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I want to thank everyone for letting me come and uh, present a kind of a new idea, a very new idea that we've been working on several uh, mm -hmm. uh, residents in, uh, in Wood Creek, and uh, I'll try to be brief and get the big points to you because I think this is going to be a conversation between our group and y'all over time very much because we share some some very similar interests. Uh, the actual current name for the idea is the Friends of Wood Creek Community Foundation. Friends of Wood Creek Community Foundation. Uh, and the basic purpose of this foundation, a 501c3 tax exempt charity group, if you will, is to raise funds for special community projects. And uh, the genesis of this uh, idea came up, oh, going back last year when uh, I was putting a candidacy together for running for town <laughs> council. And um, I, I will not brag on that uh, style, it didn't, didn't work all that well, but it was a great experience, it certainly was. But what I was thinking about was uh, what, what, what would we do next in Wood Creek? Because it was striking me very clearly that yeah, we were taking care of a lot of the big problems, big issues very easily, very clearly in town. Uh, traffic, we've got law enforcement, we've got streets, roads going, everything looking very, very good. What's going to be next for a community like ours? And it has struck me that our community is, has been changing over the years that I've been here, 12 years. We're a mature community. Uh, we're not fighting crises every week because we're taking care of things in a normal fashion, the way grown, mature communities do. So the idea then becomes, and the question then becomes, what do we do next? How do we grow from that? And the idea of a foundation was a logical thing to pursue at this point because it, it's tax exempt and it gives the people who uh, work with the foundation and contribute to it chance to be personally involved with an idea, with, with the uh, the uh, problem, the project. And so it doesn't have to go through City Hall anymore. It doesn't have to use taxpayers' money. That's why we have foundation. Uh, not that tax, uh, not that the city's not doing a great job. Clearly it is. But we're thinking about what do you do next with the community? And so uh, I had a, a several meetings with a gentleman from Texas State University from the School of Business. He works with different organizations in terms of development and advancement, kind of guy who does 501c3 kind of work. 
and met with the with our mayor too, our good mayor on a couple of occasions to make sure we understand how the city and the foundation would relate to each other. I think we've got that pretty much under control. Um, what uh, we're doing at this point, and what I'm doing at this point is assembling an organizational committee, putting people together to advise Kent on how, what we want to see in our 501c3 uh, documents, but also to kind of give some thought to bigger issues such as uh, how do you put a board together? Who would we consider for a board to be the governing portions of this foundation? Um, and that worked very well. That's been really good. Uh, Mayor has been extremely cooperative with us and supporting us for this kind of activity. But if you listen to kind of things you're thinking might be relevant in terms of actual activities or places to raise and locate funds. Mm -hmm. I'm starting here. I was the first group in the city officially that I'm talking with because you all have done a tremendous job doing incredibly important things. Families moving in, the whole family moving in. And children to the general overall functioning of the city. We would like to think in terms of supplementing that kind of activity. Think about those kind of things where maybe city intervention, city taxes may not be the best way to handle it. Okay? And we're leaving that open ended at this point to see what might come up in terms of actual projects we can work on right now. Um, let me start with one that's already working very well. That's our community garden. And I've been meeting with uh, Cheryl and Claire, and uh, uh, they're just been tremendous. I mean, I, I wish I had that kind of energy to, to do the kind of things they do, maybe because we're half my age, it helps. But they've been just super setting up the garden, collecting debt donations from various places for supplies and tools, doing all those kind of good things you want to see in a community garden. They're excited about working with the foundation because the need for that type of activity never ends. They just keep going. All different kinds of supplies, tools, and things you need to do. And you just can't keep going back to the city. This is the kind of thing that donations would be maybe the best place to go for that. So they're working very closely with us. Uh, naming opportunities. One really neat thing about a foundation is you can get people to give money for something that they get direct credit for. And that's okay. Uh, I can see at some point maybe a bench out here, the third bench, Joe Katarva's bench. That'd be okay. And and it's a good way to attract people to or in one of our parks. Pardon me? Or in one of our parks. One of your parks. <clears throat> well, we one of the parks we're gonna develop on the south side of town. It's another issue we have that to pick up the phone. <laughs> but the issue about uh um, the naming opportunities is something we think will help us attract people. In several ways, to work with the foundation, but also feel that they're part of it. Uh, special programs, seniors, kids, who knows what that might be as we get more and more invested in family life. We've got to keep that open ended, and we're very interested in keeping families involved with the foundation so we can get their needs are direct. Uh, naturalist programs. I can see putting up one of those things they even put up all over on Blue Hole. And up uh, further up north on how to look for birds and see natural life stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That'd be a great project for the citizens to get together, to put together, and fund themselves. People call it Joe Guitarist Bird Watch. I don't know. Uh, and so, uh, again, at this point, we're uh, 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 putting all of this together. I want to get the 501 c 3 Can't do anything until you get yourself ordered. So it's not in place. Pardon me. It's not legally an entity yet. No, it's not. Okay. We've been raising funds to do this. It turned out to be more expensive than I thought it would be. And but I to be honest with you, I don't have the time to do this myself. We're not able to do this. So Ken's gonna be doing the hard work for us on that. And so we've been raising funds accordingly to pay for that uh that service. And uh they're gonna go from there. Uh get it going. We have to have a board together. We need a mission statement, and that's what the organizational committee should help with. Make sure we have a very viable kind of statement that's doable. Not just pie in the kind of thing. Hopefully, hopefully we do. And that's the big pieces, I think, what we're going to be doing. Uh, I want to keep the conversation going with, with this group because obviously we share a lot of simple interests and in we want to be, we want to be helpful. Thank you. As much as we can. And, uh, um, and kind of, kind of go from there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and we really appreciate your uh, willingness to kind of 
carry the flag on this and go forward. Uh, I think there's there's going to be a great future for it. And we certainly will, will be talking to you, especially as you get more more active and get things going. But thanks, Jeff. Great. Thanks, and the trends of the library have been wonderful. <clears throat> when I started at the library, we didn't have a friends to email about me. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Great. Well, you know, that's one lesson. <clears throat> I've been learning a lot. But that's one of the big lessons is that there's about a thousand 501c3s in town. I was talking about this earlier. The city manager. Uh, and so, you, where, where, where's your niche for doing something like this? And so, uh, it seems very clear to us that we're going to focus on the great. And, and that, it's not a Wimberley thing, it's not a Valley thing. Focus on what the needs are that people see here. And keep modest. We're not going to recreate the world. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, now we go to the consent agenda and uh, does anyone want to make a motion on the minutes? I move that we approve the regular meeting minutes from April 19, 2023. I'll second it. Okay. And you want to call the roll? Number Evan? Yes. Number Moore? Yes. Chair Ron? Yes. And I'll under my director. Yes. Uh, just kind of a protocol thing. When she is participating as a member, is an alternate now. Is she an alternate right now, or is she a member right now? I guess it doesn't matter. I'm just curious. She's still an alternate, but she's she's an alternate voting member. Oh, alternate voting. Okay, okay. just curious. Uh, this stuff is so fast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, uh, Bob. Yes, so you have a report. Do you have any? news from on high that you would like to dispense on our small board? Um, <laughs> there's no new news all other than the fact that the city council is waiting with bated breath for this report so that we can move forward. So are they aware that we're going to hit them with it next week? They they will be now. Um, okay. They will be on uh, <clears throat> we'll see that tomorrow. And uh, if they can see what I see, we've already, they would have already voted yay. But, uh, well, we have to wait till next week. To do this that. I'm wanting to uh, see if we can get this in their packet yeah. for the next council vote. Okay, yes, and uh, I'm planning on presenting it after if and after we go through this and this board approves it to go forward. And uh, with any edits or anything we find tonight, if we go through. Um, okay. Report from the city manager. Um, I just want to commend you all for your hard work. All, all of the members, um, I've been in contact with, with the board as y'all have gone through this, and I think that you all have done an excellent job, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to listen to y'all present to the city council on this idea, and, and, and all the hard work the last couple of months have kept put in here. It, it, it is truly a phenomenal feat which y'all have done in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Well, and we've actually been working on the, the general skeleton of this for longer than that. But uh, we certainly appreciate all of the effort from the city staff on this. You guys have been very supportive any time we've asked you to help. It's a good partnership. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so now we move on to the regular agenda, which is a workshop to discuss the three different parks that we uh, are talking about. And uh, at this point, I would like to go and share the screen and put the actual presentation up. And Elizabeth, let us know if you're going, if you're able to see this uh, when it pops up, okay? Okay. Uh, 
I mean, uh, yeah, you can't see anything right now. It's not quite there yet. I couldn't tell. I'll go ahead and just pull up what you emailed to in case. Okay. Well, I would like to, if we can get it up on the screen and hear it, it would just be nice for everybody. Yeah, it's, it. it's whoever's controlled over there, I think, has to, like, do a share screen, maybe. Yeah, we're getting it. Okay, cool. Um, we have some printed copies here that we've already been looking through some of it. Um, this, I, I pulled this presentation together with all of the, you know, we just had a pile of all of this information that we've been pulling together for the past few months. And I was just trying to put it into some digestible uh, package so that when we presented it to council, it flowed and people didn't go, no, what are you talking about? So it has a lot of pictures. It's, it, it's something where, in addition to the numbers that we're, we're talking about the cost and stuff, people can see pictures of what they would actually be approving the payment for. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> we're getting there though, I think we're, it wouldn't let me open it on my desktop. So I'm trying to go in through my lab. Well, there it is, right? Ah. You can open, open the attachment from the email. You can go back one screen. I saw it in your email. But the email from Pat that says latest version. One at like two something or a couple hours ago. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Yay! We have Elizabeth. Can you see it? No, I mean I can see it on the board on the wall behind the empty chairs, but it's not like splitting my screen. Oh, real? Huh. Yeah. Um, I think. Can we go back to Zoom and share that, that screen? It should pop up in the <laughs> menu. Well, yeah, you know what we the bottom. I think <laughs> what Elizabeth suggested is just looking at it on her computer while we're going through, and we'll just talk to what page we're on. And stuff. That's also There's fine. Me. I can kind, I can pretty much tell. You know, I can see the picture, so I can line up fine. Oh, okay, good. Go down the bottom to share screen, no, sir. I could, I can't now. <laughs> and then go basic. Boom. Okay, now I can see it. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh... What I threw on the cover of this was kind of what this presentation is, is I took the POSAC proposal that I did to Hayes County and just basically used it as kind of a template to work the proposal to the county, to the council. And uh, I've updated all of the stuff that was on the front. So we have Creekside Park. We have Augusta Park, and we have the triangle represented on the cover. And uh, you'll see all of these illustrations on the inside. We go to the second page. This is straight out of the uh, POSAC grant, um, just basically saying why we're doing three parks instead of just focusing on one park. And uh, a question that we do get fairly often is, well, why don't we have something that is off of Champion Circle? Uh, something and Joe a minute ago alluded to the fact that it'd be nice to have a park on the south side of town. And so I've asked people on the south side of town to give me some input as to an available space in which we could put a park. 
I've yet to hear any. I don't think there is. When I was, when I was, yeah, when I was before we determined that. Yeah, so you guys have already done this once right. on the vetting that. Yeah, there is an excellent location that I can see when it's in the EPJ. That neighborhood, what is it, Ball Creek or something, yeah. whatever it's called? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's literally, there was a park there. There was a swimming pool there at one yeah. point. Oh, It'd yeah. be absolutely perfect, but it's in the ETJ. Yeah, and when I drove around in there, I thought, well, this is this is great. Let's do something here. And they're like, oh, this is a great. Yeah. So, That's anyway. That's so weird. It'd be nice. They could have had a park if they were part of the city. Right. So, but anyway. Yeah. So anyway, and the nice thing about this little thing here is it shows that two of the parks are geographically very centrally located. And I mean, we can't do anything. We can't move Augusta Park closer to anybody because that's already a park. This, it's not a major focus of what we're doing. It's, it's kind of a secondary or tertiary focus. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, just we're kind of dressing it up and doing some things. And then the next page, I tried to kind of distinguish the uh, different nature of the three parks. Uh, at one point, someone asked me, well, couldn't you put the playscape in the middle of the triangle? And I said, well, I think that you get a lot of pushback. Um, plus, you have streets where kids can run out into three different streets rather than just running out into one street. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. And you have to then sit. So anyway, the, we thought it would be better as a gathering place, like the uh, Earth Day gathering thing. If we had the gazebo, it would have been a cool thing as a kind of a focal point for the Earth Day yeah. Um, But have you guys had a chance to look through the text on this and see if we need to edit it or enhance it or change it? Because it's easy to change right now. Well, on the Creekside Park, you are going to fence it. Isn't that part of the plan? It doesn't say that. Is it part of the plan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I would add that in. Okay. Because as a parent, a woman brain, a grandchild, expensive is a little attractive. And not an inexpensive part that we've accounted for. The, the age group also is. Could be wider because easily it could be three to twelve, not five to twelve. And that's the um, that's what's on the playground. That's how they that's they, the they kind of rating. label it as five. I, I I started to do I started two to twelve because I have a granddaughter that's two. But then I thought, but all of this stuff, the consumer product safety, this is all like certified as Cody said for the five to twelve. Um, that's because they they don't know how well a parent's going to watch this. Wow, they, can, they can recently feel like oh, I might be able to navigate. Well, yeah. Two or three-year-old might be able to do it. Well, like my two-year-old granddaughter could yeah. climb up on the platform, but then she wouldn't be careful enough not to fall off. Right. Exactly. She'd get distracted and turn around and just fall off. Did you have a comment? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm just picking That's a five year old. Oh, it's a very short five year old. Really <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, 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 good point. Let me, <laughs> let me see if I can work. I can work on that. Can you, change, can you change it to two to 12, or are you worried that it would be a liability to change it from five to 12? Well, because I think the Bob is trying to say it, 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 it will. It will exclude some people. Oh, right. And, and, or I would just. Aim that children. I don't know. Aim that children, young and old? <laughs> or just aim it? Yeah, maybe it's not. I don't know. Okay. about saying children elementary school age and younger? Yeah, I think you could. I mean, because some of them can take their baby and hold it up the front of the slide and slide yeah. it down and have fun with them that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine to leave it five to 12 and it lets parents who have kids younger than five know that they need to be more involved and be on them yeah. walking in. Yeah, it's literally going to say five to twelve on the playground board. Right. Yeah, I don't think you can change it. So um uh, will say five to twelve because that's kind of one of their certifications. So 
Okay. They always say that. I always let my young kids play on stuff when they're younger because the ones for little kids are super boring, like they're for babies. Oh. So you're gonna yeah, have to be that can handle this. And, and younger, if parents. Oh yeah. Are yeah. No, it's just a suggestion. He's doing very different. If you can play security after under the triangle. Oh, okay. Period. Okay, excellent. Okay, Augusta. Hard to on that. Seems like it's, it's better English to put a comma after the word parks. Parks, comma, that word. Comma. Okay, perfect. It just enhances our credibility and be grammatically correct. Uh, <clears throat> anything else on that? I think it was good. Okay. <clears throat> now, on the next page, um, I didn't really have any way of depicting pictorially from more of uh, a ground level view what we were doing at Augusta Park. But I thought by showing this, this is an actual survey that we have of Augusta Park, which does have topographic lines on it that show where the slopes are and such. So as far as placing things, um, it can help. Um, these uh, honeycomb tunnels that you see in the upper right hand corner, I placed over there near the two picnic tables because I don't know if it was you, Elizabeth, but somebody said it would be nice to have something for the small kids to play on while the parents could sit there close to them at the table. Did you say that? I did. Um, and I'm on, I'm kind of on the fence because I do think it would be nice to have it for the natural play elements because I think they could kind of be used together um but i do like that it's close to the picnic tables i could really go either way on this if people have a strong opinion i like your idea of having it close as you know sometimes you just want to sit and talk to someone while you're in there you while your toddlers are crawling around i think it's yeah great. i do think that naturally kids are going to play longer in the natural play elements area though so i don't know how long like <clears> maybe <throat> I can't decide if it's better to have them together. I wish that we could pick up and move these picnic tables, but obviously we can't do that. Um, but I think I could go either way on this. Um, but if people have strong opinions about it, I did say that. I do think it would be nice. Um, it's just not really possible to have everything by the picnic tables. So Well, we, when we get to Creekside Park, you'll see that I've got a couple of picnic tables in there. Um, Suzanne gave me a U-line catalog that had some very cool uh, recycled plastic, very heavy duty, pretty much bulletproof picnic tables. And I have two of them in Creekside Park. Cool. They're about $1,200 a piece. We can, we can either move one of those two or if we have enough contingency, put another one over there where somebody can sit at the table and uh, you know watch their kids while they're falling off logs. We have we also a no, <laughs> wooden picnic table is hundred and ten dollars. Reasonable. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically, we just need to have some sort of sitting thing over there that's a reasonable place. It's very easy to. So I need to indicate a table over here. It could be a big rock. It could be a stump. Yeah, <laughs> Just <so good. laughs> yeah, but they need something to lay their phones on when they're texting people yeah. while their kids are falling off logs. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, um, this is this is big video tape, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. So, I mean, I think it's cool to have the honeycomb down there, or if it's up with the natural play elements, I think it's kind of like a cool, like, fort starter to begin with, you know? So I think kids would kind of use them together, which I like, um, but I think, I think there's advantages to both, so. Yeah. 
And when we did the Earth Day event over there, we went to a good bit of trouble to start to stack up some of the fort building type of sticks and logs. And we have a lot of the cedar logs that are left over. We're talking about using to retain some mulch for different either play areas or walkways. We haven't figured all of that out, but that's going to be a do-it-yourself sort of thing. It's not going to be like we're going to pay somebody to do that. That'll yeah, be no a, reason to. A volunteers come in and do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something, Elizabeth? No, I'm just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Um, I've indicated the rain garden there. Um, and uh, I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but just for your information, uh, Becky Denton is going to buy some additional seeds. And as we go there and maintain it and stuff, we're going to try to edit it a little bit. She actually wants to weed eat around some of the more valuable plants in there to keep the invasive ones from overtaking the valuable ones. So, we're going to look at that and we're going to better define where the borders of the rain garden are because she thinks the footprint of it might be a little bigger than it needs to be. So we might be able to get a little more useful space around the edges of that. I think we maybe probably want to define an area as they're going to be over the plain. Mm -hmm. That way they kind of recognize that, oh, that's a rain garden. Mm -hmm. Or our parents can recognize, oh, that's a rain garden. And it's not just weeds. Don't grow it out anymore. You know, I don't know what we And it could be future stuff. It doesn't have to be on this. Well, we could, we could actually make, we're going to have a bigger rain garden sign, in, and that's shown on a subsequent slide. But we could do some little just stakes that say rain garden and put those every 10 or 20 feet and just little ones that somebody could see and know that's kind of a... Um, another road idea is to make my kid get a kid at the front. the road and that would be more of a visual reminder for children. Mm -hmm. okay. They can make it a game of jumping over the street. Sure. <laughs> okay. Like a, a heavy nylon or anything. Yeah. Okay. The last few years. So they won't keep anybody out. out. <laughs> this kind of visual barrier right. boundary. I know. If you're chatting with your friends, you're probably not reading the signs. But if you see a rope off, you might go, oh. Right. Well, and one thing I'm seeing happening here is we're getting into the weeds, which, excuse the pun, because mm -hmm. rain garden has some passion. Exactly, and, this, and that could be, <laughs> but, that but, could be ancillary. The thing I'm nervous about presenting this to council is what I'm hoping will be like a 15-minute presentation turns into two hours. And so I'm going to avoid talking about this stuff to this level of detail that's, as much as possible. I think that's, I think that's a very good um, idea. I, I'm going to just do broad brush as much as I can and let the pictures speak for themselves. Um, I will point out on the, uh, this particular view that we're getting estimates on a surface between the parking area and the bocce ball court or the ping pong table and for uh, people to be able, ADA people to get to the ADA opening on the bocce ball court, which we are looking at resurfacing with bocce ball turf that is tan colored. So it will not be visually object you know, objectionable. We have the cornhole game over here on the side. The nice thing about this park is with the bocce ball court, the ping pong table, the cornhole game, adults can enjoy this park as much as kids can. Yeah, and I plan on playing a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, the next one is just a quick slide just to show the bocce ball court and to show the kind of opening we're talking about putting on the side toward the parking lot. Uh, so someone could pull the hinge. I guess it's, I think we're going to do it where it's like a two by six open and uh, roll in if they needed to in the shape. Uh, the next one shows the new um, Augusta Park element. And one question I have for the board 
is we had talked about different options on the ping pong table. We talked about the concrete versus this one. The reason I put this one in is it doesn't take a forklift unloaded. It appears to be just as durable as the concrete. And, and specs, they say, he says it's just as durable. And uh, its shipping cost is tremendously lower. Um, so it doesn't eat as much of our budget. But I'm wondering if the shiny metal stuff is going to be something that anybody would object to. Yeah. Um, it could be. But, but you know, someone's going to check the Well, yeah. yeah. And if you if they have all that money, and it's more practical. Yeah. And it's actually the surface of this thing is graffiti proof. You could, oh. you can actually like, you know, a, apparently the surface is graffiti resistant. You know, the different materials they use with that. Well, that's good. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and we've got the honeycomb tunnels we talked about earlier. Where to put them is a question mark, but that can be addressed as we get into the weeds at a later stage. Um, I've shown some of the. Oh, okay. Small question: The cornhole bean bags are they going to be divided there? Ah, uh, okay, okay, good, good times, good idea. We we were talking about having a box to hold uh, game. What do you call them? Game elements, game pieces. What would you call them? And pieces. Um, just a weatherproof box. Oh, okay. But when you buy home, you go to the box. A deck box? Yeah, something just like that. Like I have by my pool, pool box, deck right. box, something like that. Probably probably somehow incorporated into the sign, the, the big other message board, whatever it is, you know, about, about two benches mm -hmm. or two picnic tables that are out there right now. And it would be nice if it, if it was. Probably would, and it looked a little bit more natural instead of a big plastic box out there. But anyway, I'm just going to say a, a box to hold the game pieces. We can get into what that is later. Um, thank you for pushing that. <clears throat> uh, and then I was basically showing two of the existing elements that we're planning on putting it as a, one of them's already over there. The uh, Upper right hand corner one is over there. And then the one on the left is currently in the triangle and is to be moved over there. And that would go over in that corner where the natural play elements are going. And then we have stumps and things like that over at Creekside Park. We can move over to the loose park areas. And then we uh, can also get a lot of the sticks and such that we say from the Earth Day thing. Um, we have a couple of very nice signs that have been prepared by the, uh, the Cypress Creek Conservation District and very nicely designed and with a bunch of information, visuals, and text that's already been vetted by them that talks about rain gardens. Wow. So we just use that digital file and have it printed out and put on the sign. Uh -huh, great. So yeah, it was just sitting there in on the computer. <laughs> so. Um, uh, the next one is the, the triangle, and this gazebo is roughly shown to scale in this picture. Um, the picture I had of the triangle, it shows best where it would go, and the picture I had of the gazebo, unfortunately, had the opening facing away from the way I would think the opening would best work. Because if you, and I talk about that on the next page, which you have kind of a drone shot that shows where the gazebo would be located. And if you look at the gazebo, it has this huge shaded area uh, beside it, which if we ever had an event, you'd want the opening on the gazebo to face the big shaded area so that people could have all of their uh, lawn chairs and stuff they could bring just sit in there and 
you know, watch somebody play an acoustic guitar or have a Wood Creek open mic night for bicyclists to come in or something. You know, it's, it's good, uh, the possibilities are <clears throat> Yeah, but the scale on this drone view is to scale. That's how big it would be. So I've I've measured, you know, took the Google Earth shot I did, measured the street and scale the gazebo relative to the same scale as the street. It's a 20 foot gazebo. 20 foot, okay. 20 foot gazebo. And uh, we've got estimates. Uh, we've got, already have a couple of estimates. We might even be getting another estimate, and we've asked for three or four estimates on the slab. So we will provide the people that are installing the gazebo with a prepared slab when they start. And uh, there will have to be some discussion with the people that are going to build a gazebo as to whether or not they want to drill holes in the concrete or we want to put some studs like you would have if you were building a house where you put the base plate in the house. But that's, again, that's an in the weeds thing. Now, we'll work those details out. Anything else on the triangle that I, I, I didn't have much on that. I just have a question. <clears throat> the last time you started in this community, you talked mm -hmm. about a steel people, but this picture is wood. <clears throat> but you went back to the wood. Money. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we, fun, we basically I, I discovered that the 16 foot metal gazebo was like. Wasn't it like $47,000 yeah, or something? It was $46,000. And, and then the 24 was like 89000 or something. So we immediately started backpedaling back to our original plan with the okay. nice red cedar gazebo. I think it looks great. And we started with that, and so it was like we're going to finish with that. <laughs> um, we, uh, we had talked about the 24 foot one, but the pricing on that pushed us a little too far. So we backed off to a 20 foot gazebo, which will still give us a, a decent size. It's three feet larger than the gazebo they have over at Cypress Point, which is a 17 foot gazebo. And they use that for meetings of their uh, property owners association and use it all the time. So being you know bigger, it will be even more useful. Okay, the next one, um, I debated on turning this one sideways to get it a little bit bigger, but all the text on it was oriented the way it is. Um, and so I was mainly trying to show the overall site layout of where the parking is, where the fence is, where the playscape area and the spinner area is, and where the swings are. And this was not a view for people to go in and try to read all of the four point type on it. Um, but I thought I would leave that in there to kind of infer that it was not just something that I photoshopped up. This is based on you know engineering drawings that they've done. Um, it's overlaid on a tree map that we have of the site. And we worked very hard to avoid taking down any significant trees in the area. And a former member of the tree board was over there when we evaluated the, tree, the, the trees that we were talking about and seemed to think we were being fairly judicious. Okay. Okay. If you, if you're at that. I'm going to unfortunately be presenting this, so I'm not going to be able to hand it off to you, but I don't know, maybe we could have the whole board. That's another question. I'll call in. Okay. Um, I, I decided on my own to put an easement going down the side of the uh, park. Uh, you see that kind of gray stripe going there. And it's about 10 feet wide, and there will be two removable eight foot sections of fence at the front of the park that you can unbolt and remove the center pole. So, if you need to bring in a front end loader or a skid steer and put more of the uh, engineered wood fiber in, 
you can do it without having to go through a four foot gate with the fuel barrel. Wonderful. So, and we also had talked at one point about incorporating another 15 or so feet of the Hall Creek property from the uh, golf course. But that is really up in the air right now. And from what I understand, the duration that they are offering on it is not terribly long. At this point. At this point. What the hell? Um, really, they haven't offered any. We haven't gotten that far, but information <clears throat> from them were like five years ago. Right. And you don't build an ornamental yeah. iron fence on yeah. something you lease for five years. Right. I think we haven't, I mean, that's <laughs> just the, uh, yeah. I mean, we haven't even really, yeah. we're a ways away. Let, let me just say, we, we need to proceed without that. And uh, if we ever do come to a resolution, we already talked about being able to move. Yeah, I've talked to the fence guy and he said, you can even just take this existing fence and use a grinder to take the fence down and just move it out and sleeve where the posts go in and drop them back in. Or you could make all of the panels on this side of the fence bolted on instead of welded on. And so you can unbolt those and just take them and reuse them. What are your thoughts on that, Cody, as a construction dude? What do we what do we gain at this point? If all of our equipment fits within the city property, what's the what's the benefit to the city or the public in <clears throat> using that golf course management? Probably not a lot. And during times there have that is a floodplain. And during times when the water is going through there, that would just make a fence that could catch debris even farther into the flow that's coming down Hall Creek. Yeah, that's a good point. I, <laughs> I think a lot of our correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, a lot of the first initial stuff, we thought we'd have to have that land mm -hmm. play equipment in there. Yeah, right. that's a swing stuff. Right. That's a swing stuff. <clears throat> right. And all of our all of all of the old <clears throat> that the park board has has looked at fit currently in the uh, space we have. I don't feel that really that land gives too much benefit to the point. I don't either. I don't either. And that's yeah, I think we ought to just stick with what we've got here. And later on, if somebody wants to do something that's outside of the fence on that property, you can maybe put a trail down the side or something if you want to. Right. But that's for later on and that's not part of this discussion. Yeah. Agree. <clears throat> And I just showed where the park was in general location over at the right. That's something I pulled right out of the uh, proposed act proposal. A uh, closer aerial view that shows what the various elements are and calling them out by name. So if someone wants to, uh, I'm really hoping that the council will take this document and read it like a book instead of just waiting for me to read it to them when they, you know, get to, uh, you'll have the advantage of having your own printed copy you can take home here. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the things that I can do about for this particular group is to state my, my overwhelming approval of this from the very beginning. And mm -hmm. the fact that I know that the deliberations that were made as far as, for instance, this large play piece compared to a lot of the other ones, and compared very, very carefully prior to this my reverse, um, prior to actually deciding on this one, that, that considering all the rest yeah, of it, and, and, and looking at the price points for each one, um, this one is by far and above uh, the superior choice compared to a lot of the other ones that could have been made. And this one will also appeal to the most the, the largest age group as well i think yeah, I think yeah. You're right, exactly right about that there's a lot going on in that place guys mm -hmm. oh yeah and yeah. you add in the swings and and and, and the spinner. Spinner. <laughs> spinner it's yeah. you know I'm, I, was, I was five years old again yeah I, i'm i'm going to be on the spinner myself and i'm glad that elizabeth suggested that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> those are, older kids like them. They're fun. Um, I did want to confirm. So this is uh, Cody. You were able to talk to someone. That's that swerve zip slide is is what we like customize, right? That was one of the things. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah so I've I've been concerned yeah. about only having the spiral slides. Thanks for looking into that. Um, no, it starts with a five foot platform that goes down. Perfect. Oh, I love this. I love this. Please, this is back on. We're not that far yet. We're not that far yet. You're jumping ahead. The matter of 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 the
And they even went in and suggested little edits we could do that would save us money. So they, they've been playing very well with us. You had to kind of do a little bad cop every now and then to kind of remind them that we are a client and they do want to sell to us. But uh, aside from that, they've been very cooperative and yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Can't say enough about them. <laughs> no, they've been really good to deal with that. Very interactive. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll reach your page. If you wanted to comment on uh, these other pieces of equipment that are not in the playscape area, but well, the, the world thing is in the playscape area, but all the swings and stuff are in the back corner. Mm -hmm. And you were going to say something. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, because I have, I have this kind of eye to eye face to face design swing thing. But, but the parents sit, or the parents, they can sit there and mm -hmm. swing, and the child, the baby sit there. And yeah, I can't wait to do that, that with my granddaughter. So <laughs> I ran into that swing at the city of Austin Park. Uh -huh. It was close to our house when we lived in South Austin. And both of my kids were in that swing with my wife. And they, when they're babies, babies, yeah. it was very popular. Oh, it was so much fun. Really fun for that. Yes, I can imagine. These are also great fun. transitions. Excuse me, from one to the next one to the, the, the regular yeah. swing. Yeah. Great I would have liked to make the swing set larger. We don't really have a footprint for it. I thought it was really important to have two big kid swings yeah. side by side. So yeah. two big girls can swing one time, all in one, That's two boys or whatever. Cool. And I think these things are rated even to hold a good size adult. Too. Aren't they rated at like 300 pounds? They're, yeah, they're over, they're <laughs> over engineered. Yeah. And uh, the beauty, you know, we, we did have someone bring up concerns about the safety of swings. Uh, one of the issues was um, that the, on some of the wooden ones and such, bolts can come loose and somebody swinging the top bar can like displace and somebody can fall and really hurt themselves. But if you look at how this armature that the swings are attached to is made, it would be incredibly difficult for anything to happen to that. You use nylon blockness anyway, most likely. That's where yeah, I mean, this thing, these guys, all of their engineering on all of these attach points is way over engineered. This, by the way, is a piece of the rope flower, the big climbing rope thing. Have you seen this? Pass that down to Bob. And inside, look at the inside of it. <laughs> it has, that's, that's not going to break. <laughs> no. That has steel cables. You could basically pick up the whole park with a Sikorsky helicopter <laughs> using the cables on this thing. <laughs> I mean, and then I, because when I first saw the rope flower, I was very skeptical because I went over to Blue Hill Park and looked at one of their rope climbing things, and it was all falling apart, and the ropes were sagging, and I thought, well, I just don't like it. We can't do that. But I got Todd to send to me this, and it just completely stood me on my head that they were doing and Like all of these things that are pinched together, I don't even know how they do it, but... They're, they're just amazingly durable. This this whole park, the whole Creekside Park, is designed to be very, very low maintenance, and very, very safe. So, yep. So. But, um, but, go ahead, Elizabeth. Yeah, listen. All right. I just had one question, and of course, I still want the platform world, but can we get in a color that's not blue? Yeah, we have anything we want in any color we want. Okay, perfect. I just, everything else is kind of brown and green, so I feel like sticking to that and kind of making it look yeah, cohesive. That's the only picture I could get my hands on. And now that you mentioned I mean, I'll take that, it blue, but I just wanted to make sure. No, I'll it. no it'll, it'll match the palette that we choose for the landscape itself. Perfect. Which is at some point we're going to talk about anyway. We're not is green white. okay? I, anything, that? just anything that's cohesive with, you know, the lime green, the dark okay. green, or the, or the brown. I, I think would be fine. maybe not the brown because that wouldn't show up good, but a green, yeah. Yeah, so I'll make that green. 
Okay, and I apologize for it saying Brook Hollow Park. I've already changed it on the original document. Um, this was the leftover from the post Okay, <clears throat> and this is uh, this page is basically. Oh no! Wait a minute. I thought I had a version of this where I bolded the part where it said would now cost three hundred and twenty thousand fifty three thousand more. Um, I don't know how that one was. Yeah, you got the very last one so it's chopped off too. So yeah. Oh. Things. Mine said will not cost three hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, but I had it bold. Okay. I had it where it's like you know really jumped out. And fix. Uh... Uh, so anyway, uh, basically, I was just wanting to point out that we've been rolling the rock uphill with this on cost. And so we we really had to do some edits on it to uh, to make it all fit. And so one of the elements that we did remove from the original POSAC grant was the large platform that was going to be built, but that would have cost us in today's dollars about fifty grand to build it. And the play value of that thing versus the play value of the other elements that we've done instead is about the same for a much, much lower cost. So we had to get creative on Augusta Park. And since Augusta Park already had other things going on, we thought that would be a reasonable thing to do. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, this, the next four pages are a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet, where all of the various estimated costs that we have been getting have been populating um, in on a by-park basis. And this is the kind of the executive summary page of all of the costs that we have looked at um, for this. Our budget is $267,000. And so we've got right now these items cost two hundred sixty-six five sixty-five ninety-nine. So we have not gone over budget. Um, we uh, we've really tried to scrub the cost down. We we've, we've got estimates on almost every single thing where it's not a collaborative uh, one of the cooperative buying. Uh, Groups like Omni or Byboard. Um, so we go to the triangle. And Pat, I did. Notice, no, sorry, I was just going to tell you, I did notice like one small error in something on Augusta Park, and I, I just went and checked it during this meeting, but uh, it's only like, I think like 120 bucks. Um, so I can email that to you. Um, Which one is that? It's the scoreboard. Uh, you only, I, I had broken it down for what the scoreboard costs and then what it costs to ship it here. And we did not have the shipping costs in there. And since it's coming from Europe, it is like 130 bucks or something like that. So um, okay, I can. It's just so much better than the other options. Like it's just, it's not even a question, I don't think. Um, and it's actually, yeah, so if you go to the Augusta one, I'll tell you how much it should be. That's fine. Just, yeah, email it to me and I'll, I'll add it in. I'll get it right because we're okay, still cool. under budget. And it's, it's actually uh, less than 120. I did the math wrong in my head. So, okay, cool. Okay. I'm going to see you right now. I think the actual budget is 267500 because, um, Pace County gave us the two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and uh, we were required uh, in that funding agreement. Let me check real quick. So how much did you say? Two sixty-seven thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. five hundred. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I want to make sure that we. Well, that would be a good thing for you to correct me as I'm saying that, so the council knows we have even more money than we thought. I'd almost like that to happen. <laughs> I'd be glad that. 
Um, anyway, so we've got, uh, you know, I really, the main reason I wanted to bring all of this before this group was we talked about all of this stuff before these last four pages, but these last four pages are really what the board has to look at and say, are we spending our money well and correctly, and does this all make sense? But it is all based on, uh, like the gazebo assembly. Um, we have a bid from a local person that's going to put that together for $1,100 in two days. And then, but we told them that we would provide them a cherry picker to put the cupola on it. Butler rents cherry pickers for $216 a day. So that's why it's uh, $1,316. Mr. Butler really? Oh, oh does he really? So we might, get that for free. we might get some other stuff. So anyway, um, we've gotten down to that level of detail on most of these costs. The slab, we have estimates on the slab. We have an estimate on the electrical that is actually 1600 but I left it at 2000 just in case a little contingency. Um, I even put in a water fountain slab cost. We can probably get the person that does the slab or the gazebo to throw us in a slab and we really off the same concrete. Yeah. yeah, and just say, here, do us a little form for this and there to be our yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was <laughs> correct. The city, um, the county was two hundred thousand, and then uh, oh, the city will contribute sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So oh, we have extra five hundred dollars that we have to cool. put in there. So That's a part venture. If you want to say the wrong amount, <laughs> please, yeah. we actually have five hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I, I may do it. Just keep your stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I. Thrown a couple of extra benches in. The benches, the benches I put in here are like game time benches. These are like very high end benches um, that are the powder coated, the set in concrete sort of things. Eight eighty nine each, and then putting them in concrete probably would bring it up to two thousand um, dollars. And really, that's oh one other item that uh, Ruth Ann asked about is a ceiling fan. I need to add a ceiling fan. Even if we don't go with the ceiling fan, we should put in the future electrical conduit for it. Well, no, that's already in the bid. That's in the bid. They've got the box for it. Right. Um, it's just, in fact, I think they even are saying if we have the ceiling fan, they'll put it up for us. So, and I've got two outdoor ceiling fans on my back deck that I think each one costs 185 bucks. And they're 56 inch fans, which are probably, and they put out a lot of air on my back deck. I mean, welcome to come over and see, but when you're sitting underneath, I think you'll be there. Um, so I'm adding a ceiling fan, and I'll add the uh, I'll get a bigger one. We'll put like four hundred dollars in. Two five. I'll see how big a ceiling fan I can get for five hundred dollars. Okay. What are those? I'll call it rep. Big ass fans. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That that's the brand name by it. No, it really is. It is. No, really? That's yeah. big ass fans? Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not Pat. Yeah. And it's foot wide in diameter family. They just about have the industrial market. Yeah, they must be high enough so that the person who's indiscreet about about touching it won't. Oh, yeah, yeah, really. So, and I guess I'll just put big asterisk A and asterisk asterisk. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments on the Z on I guess on the triangle cost? Okay, creekside cost. We now look, should we? I think we ought to, ought to add an addendum to this that has the creekside quote. I don't know the quote from Cunningham they sent us. Oh. 
the whole pack, the whole package, just, yeah. yeah, just an addendum to this package, an extra sheet. Or that's it's not in a landscape format, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter if it's an addendum. Or yeah, I'll or just count it all. Really fine. I'll just have it as a separate item in the packet, but uh, what's, what's in the uh, it would be the actual uh, itemized quote from Cunningham oh, for the 161, and it's like two and a half pages. Yeah, long. all the individual pieces. Right. And so they can see the cost breakdown of all of the different stuff. Full, pretty much full transparency. I think it's more transparent than that. Yeah. You want to get in that like the week? On that particular item, given that it's that costly, it's kind of nice to see that for that amount of money, you're buying two and a half pages worth of stuff. I mean, you might as well be prepared to go down that road. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. So no, that's good. I think by the time you're done, if you only present half of these pages, I mean, have them all there, but go from <laughs> writing down some extra actual pages to, to Go to this page, this page, this page. You can look at the rest of it anytime you want, but don't take the time to. It, they should. They can look at it ahead of time, actually, if you really want to. They look at the whole thing. So just fly through the first page. Yeah, so say on this page we talk about this. On this page we talk about this. On this page we talk about. It, it gets serious on page eight. That's where where it begins, and that's just the intro to the triangle. Myth nine. You, you look at 10, you show them 10, and tell them what these, what these blue things are here. Are these numbered? No, I, I, I number them. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, you, you, you use 11 specifically because it shows... Which uh, one's 11? 11 is the Creekside Park Playscape Command. Oh, yeah, that one. And the, and <clears throat> this, this, is, this is a sizzle. This stuff is. Well, big sizzle. It is. Uh, you look yeah. at that picture and you're just impressed as all get out because mm -hmm. of what it is. Um, same thing for 13, you want to show these specific, tell them to look at these, these particular things. Go from that to 15, take a look at how they count themselves anytime they want. Well, and Bob, I'm hoping as we go through this, and I'm assuming, I know it will be a discussion, it will not be me just sage on the stage up there talking. It will be, and so if I get into the weeds or something like that, Call me to task. No, just say, Pat, I think you don't need, why don't we go on to this or do on that, you know, just call me to task them because I'm one of these guys that gets into the weeds real quickly. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, that, that because it takes time, it does take time, but mm -hmm. they should have already looked at this as well already, the yeah. whole thing. Mm -hmm. So basically, what they should be doing, my opinion, is asking questions. Mm -hmm. um, which you already have good answers for because you've been so well studied already. Yeah, we've tried to anticipate just about any question that anyone could ever have. Um, even, yeah, I don't want to address the bottom very, It's very straightforward and it's funded. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is page 15 on the cost breakdown. E66599. <laughs> any more questions? And yeah. we, have done, we have done everything possible to adhere to what we tell Pace County we can spend their money on. Mm -hmm. I think that is but, important. Yeah. I think Bonichelle and, and that group will appreciate it too. Yeah. And they, and they will love being around for photo opportunities when we get this thing out because yeah. it'll be a real nice background. It'll be the headline of the view. Mm -hmm. Well, well just the fact we won the money is the headline. It will be <laughs> it will be above the fold. Last yeah. time it wasn't yeah. above the fold. It'll be above the fold. Really. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, our, our place guys is going to be better than oh, anyone way better, in the way better than Bowery. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it going to be wild? Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll have people sneak in here to play on our place. We, we yeah. will for a while. <clears throat> we will. Yeah. But that'll Yeah. Uh, okay. So you just get keep up for everybody. You're <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I don't I, do. Um. I did uh, when it when it looked like I could afford to when I was looking at the cost of what it worked, and I did put a bicycle rack in for Creekside. Yeah, we need bicycle. Um, and then we've got two of those PVC tables, one of which could be reallocated over to Augusta Park if we wanted to. And it turns out, Suzanne, that those tables everybody has. 
Wayfair has them. They're, they all cost about the same, but they don't look exactly the same, but they're almost the same. But the UI one is as good as any. Um, the fence, one thing that really saved our necks on the fence is the discount fence guy gave us a killer quote on an ornamental, it's a hybrid fence, it's ornamental iron and a privacy fence. And I had a nice 20 minute discussion with the homeowner that lives adjacent to the park. And I asked for his input on what kind of fence he would like between the park and his house. And I said, you could have an ornamental iron where you could sit on your deck and look out through the ornamental iron and see the trees and stuff. Or you could have a privacy fence so you don't have people looking in on your backyard. He said, I really prefer the privacy. So the fence that we have around it is a four foot fence except for this six foot privacy fence. And I think the, the four foot fence it makes it more welcoming. Um, there is another park up near where my uh, son and his wife live that has a four foot fence. I think it's kind of a standard thing for parks. It's not to keep deer from jumping in or out, and it's not to keep people from sneaking in or out. It's just to keep kids from running out on the street. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. And it will have one of those. It will the the gate on it will be uh, spring loaded, and it'll have an automatic latch. So you you'd have to hold the gate open for it to be in a cool gate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so anyway, the tree work you've gotten us, that's a hard quote on the yes. trees. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing we're a little unclear on is the landscaping. We've had a little difficulty, but we've got landscapers coming out of the woodwork around here. And by the way, that one was build the park and then landscape it. Yeah. yeah. Because <clears throat> you have something to work with. Yeah. Yeah, because right now I think they're intimidated by a fear of the unknown. I mean, I mean <laughs> let's say build a park and then landscape. Build a park and then design the landscape to the park. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, let's see. So you've got all the creekside uh, costs there. The Augusta Park. Uh, we. Uh, there, we've got the bocce ball turf and the bocce ball labor uh, and materials that you, did you get the Poochie's quote or was that Becky that got the Poochie's quote? No, that's me. Um, I'm, I'm friends with the Poochie's and have seen their work and they do a great job, so. Um, okay, good. Okay. good. And their quote was, what I did with their quote is I broke it into three pieces. So you don't see the mean. numbers of the case, but it all adds up exactly to what their quote was. So, um, like the decomposed granite area, it says where the three poochies are, you add those three numbers together and it comes out to what their quote was. See? Anyway. Um, and then I added a truckload of uh, 20 yards of the engineered wood uh, fiber from uh, Wimberley Landscaping, but after Cody called it to my attention that uh, it's way cheaper from Cunningham, we might see what we can do about getting some supplied by them. I don't know how all that works. We'll talk to Todd and have it added on to work. When you creep side. Yeah. Just, just kind of and dump it somewhere, I guess, if you're a front end loader. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like how rest in bags. Mm -hmm. It's got to ship somehow. It probably we just, we just order three pallets, <clears throat> three extra pallets, and we do whatever we want to with it. Or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, if we could potentially cut that cost down a little bit in half. Yeah. And so, uh, and Becky wanted some seeds for the rain garden, so we put in seeds under our three hundred dollar procurement threshold. <clears throat> um, you can easily spend that three hundred dollars at Austin Natural Garden. 
Yeah. It's easy to spend $50 there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, the reason we've had to get all of these many, many, many quotes is because we have a $300 purchasing threshold that's imposed by city ordinance. Anyway. So, and that is the uh, that is the uh, the presentation, and that is, I guess, that's probably the end of the workshop. Yep, you agree? Yeah. So we're on the next agenda item. The next agenda item is discuss and take possible action to make a recommendation to the city council regarding development work and acquisition placement of equipment structures and incidental or various free funds. <laughs> Do we have any discussion? Yeah, I think I think y'all well researched this. I think this is wonderful. Thank you for all your work. Yeah, thanks, Pat. Well, not just everybody, everybody. Uh, presentation is excellent. I'm one of the loudest ones, but that doesn't mean that I did it all. <laughs> um, so this no more discussion. I move that we send this uh, presentation to City Council and that you present it at the next City Council meeting. We recommend City Council to fully fund all three projects. That's good. Well, let's make sure she gets that for a moment first. Move to send that presentation to City Council and fund I'm sorry. He's the best. Recommend that <coughs> the Council fully funds all three projects. Our, can I maybe recommend a uh, friendly amendment to that? If you want to. Uh, I was going to say recommend this project instead of all three projects. You got them delineated in three projects. Oh, yeah. Okay. But okay. Yeah. Well, okay. And, in, and in funding breakdown. Yeah. If you want to make it up the amendment, then go ahead. No, no, I would call it. Yeah. What? This project. This project. This project. Yeah, this project. This is this is funded <laughs> for one grant, um, two hundred thousand. And so although we're doing three, it's it's one project. It's a you know what I what I want to worry about is the council member that grossly objects some portion of this. Everything else is solved. Well, by one that, that is your recommendation. Now, council, your recommendation is to fund uh, this project. If they want to say, uh, I move to fund these three projects, that's their that's their call. But, but your recommendation to them is to fund this project. Does that make sense? They can always change the wording on their motion because yours is only a recommendation to council. So oh, then I'll, I'll change, I can change, I'm in my motion. Instead of three projects, make it this project, please. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, okay. Maybe she's Good. Oh, you got the, okay, call a little piece. <clears throat> and Elizabeth can vote because we can both see and hear her. <laughs> And do the first week call. Board member Elizabeth Warren, Mallard, okay. sorry. Did you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. It was kind of Yeah. <laughs> you got it, though. Is that a yes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, alternate board member voting today, Monica Resco. Yes. Chair Pat Rowling. Absolutely. Uh, board member Tony Abney. Yes. Motion back. Uh, meeting adjourned. Great. We all have had enough of it. How's that to y'all, Bob? Yeah, I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing.